fast bot. What I would argue is the most difficult achievement to get in Turing Complete. Before getting into the meat of this video, let's introduce the game, Turing Complete. This game is about building a computer, and not just like a pseudo-fake simplified computer, but actually using logic gates as the foundation of a simulated computer. This game holds your hands through the process by giving you small logic problems that build on each other one after the other. Until next thing you know, you're writing your own assembly language. If that doesn't sound like fun, you'll just have to trust me. Before I played this game, I had always been curious how computers work at the fundamental level. I would see someone build something like a redstone computer in Minecraft and be amazed, but before I played this game, I had never actually sat down to learn how to do it. I really wanted to know what happens in the black box, that is the inner workings of the hardware, and Turing Complete seemed like it would fill that void, and by golly it did just that. If you want to learn how a computer works, this is the game. Also I'm not sponsored, I just love it. And personally if I love a game, that means I have to get all the achievements. And while I was able to get all the achievements in a reasonable amount of time, there was one achievement, Fastbot, that really had me stuck for a while. If you don't want any spoilers for the game, or the solution, stop watching now. Otherwise, continue onwards. The level that Fastbot takes place in is robot racing. The idea behind robot racing is to write a program that is as short as possible. The shorter the code, the faster the robot. The achievement requires you to beat Robot Racer in less than 64 bytes or 64 lines of code. The first program I wrote moved the robot every step it needed to take to reach the end. This was tedious, but I had a reason for it. I did this to help find patterns in the movement. There's visible patterns here, but I was curious how the patterns would look written out as assembly. I also tried drawing out patterns in an image. As you can see here, there is a sort of recursive pattern where each line of the preceding shape changes the orientation of the next shape. I discovered that even though the controls of the robot are directional, 0 being right, 1 being down, 2 being left, 3 being up, it seems the pattern lay in either having the robot turn left, right, or go straight. For example, in the first bend, the robot starts by facing right, turns left, goes straight, turns right, goes straight, turns right, goes straight, turns left. Yeah, it's a, it's a mouthful. And then, after going forward and turning right, it repeats the pattern, but inverted. Going right, forward, left, forward, left, forward, right, and so on and so on. As much as I tried to optimize my code, it seemed hopeless trying to get past 83 lines. I was even able to simplify the program so that the code requires only one return statement. I love how every function just falls through to the last line. But it just wasn't good enough. At this point, I figured it was time to ask the internet for help with an algorithm for generating this shape, called the Hilbert Curve. And while I found some really cool algorithms for generating it, I was unable to implement anything that was simple enough. I was stuck. At this point, I had worked on the program for literal weeks, trying to optimize the solution. And then it hit me. I remembered that Mythbusters video, where they show a paintball gun representing a CPU. It makes a smiley face. Then, an array of paintball guns representing a GPU instantly shoots out a Mona Lisa. The GPU was created as a hardware solution to the computational problem of rendering 3D images. This was something that was doable on the CPU, but in order to get high frame rates, new hardware was needed. This is not a software problem, it's a hardware problem. So I made my own chip, a Fastbot Processing Unit, or FBPU for short. I built in every direction the robot needed to move in, and then attached it to my computer. There was even a nice little spot I could hook it into. I wrote a simple program to run through the FBPU, and there it was. I got the achievement. After getting the achievement, I decided to check out how it was done in the achievement guide, and it turns out the hardware solution was how they did it too, though their solution was a bit more elegant than mine. Honestly though, I didn't care how brute force my solution was at that point, I was just glad it worked. I am curious if it's possible to create a software solution to this problem, but I don't think it is. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell for future content like this. If you'd like to support these videos and other things I create in the future, consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Link in the description. Bye for now.